Our Father, our hearts are open to receive from you. Thank you for the word of life, the word of God, and the entrance into it that gives us light. Thank you for ministering to us today, giving us an impartation that will not simply inspire or challenge us, but one that will bring transformation. I thank you for this good ground in which you've given me the privilege of sowing the seed of your living and powerful word. We will not be hearers only, but doers of your word for your glory and honor. We pray in Jesus' name. Let everybody say amen. amen. Verse 1 of 2 Kings chapter 7, then Elisha said, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, tomorrow about this time, a seah of fine flour shall be sold for a shekel and two seahs of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. So an officer on whom, whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said, look, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, could this thing be? And he said, in fact, you shall see it with your eyes, but you shall not eat of it. Now there were four leprous men at the entrance of the gate they said to one another, why are we sitting here until we die? If we say we will enter the city, the famine is in the city and we shall die there. And if we sit here, we die also. Now, therefore, come, let us surrender to the army of the Syrians. If they keep us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall only die. And they rose at twilight to go to the camp of the Syrians and when they had come to the outskirts of the Syrian camp, to their surprise, no one was there. For the Lord had caused the army of the Syrians to hear the noise of chariots and the noise of horses, the noise of a great army. So they said to one another, look, the king of Israel has hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to attack us. Therefore they arose and fled at twilight and left the camp intact, their tents, their horses, and their donkeys, and they fled for their lives. And when these lepers came to the outskirts of the camp, they went into one tent and ate and drank and carried from it silver and gold and clothing and went out and hid them. And they came back and entered another tent and carried some from there also and went and hid it. We're going to stop there. The narrative continues. I encourage you to read that uh, later in the day. Uh, why sit we here and die? Uh, here is an open door of opportunity, perhaps for us. Why should we just sit here and die? I want you to help me with the title of the message. Um, I want you to look to the person on your right. And if there's a wall on your right, look to the left. <laughs> Actually, I want you to speak to the person on both sides. Even just ask them this question, what you waiting for? I want to ask somebody the same, what you waiting for? You may be seated. Uh, to all of my English professors in the room, what are you waiting for? But uh, there's just something about putting it in this perspective. What you're waiting for? These are times that we think and say we're waiting on God when actually he's waiting on us. We've convinced ourselves we're waiting on God, failing to see that God is in fact waiting on us. That it's time for us to do something while we're waiting for him to do something. In fact, it's the something in many cases that has already been done. How be it that said, all of us are waiting on God for something. All of us are waiting on God for something like Abraham in antiquity or history past, we're waiting for God to fulfill uh, a particular promise or some particular promises. How many of you are waiting for uh, a promise or a word of prophecy to be fulfilled? I mean, there's some things that you know God has spoken to you and you're, you're waiting for the manifestation of it. 
Uh, some are waiting for better days. Uh, some are waiting uh, uh, for marriage. You, 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 you've been looking forward to marriage, but it seems like marriage is elusive. And, and you're waiting on God. God, send me, send me the right person. Some of you ain't even praying that one. They're praying the right person. Just send me somebody, God. Send me somebody. I heard a delightful testimony the other day by, I think her name is Mother Walton, and she's from uh, Michigan. I shared this with a few folk, and at a Church of God in Christ women's convention, she was asked a question, um, and at the age of 76, she was asked the question how she was making it in light of um, being a widow. Her husband had passed away, and she said that God is taking care of her. Uh, said one day this old man showed up at the church and showed up at the church and wanted to take her out. He came in the front door. She said to her son, I want you to take me out through the back door or the side door. She said, I knew something was wrong with this picture when the man said to me, with what you get and what I could get, we could do well. And she said, my husband is taking better care of me from the grave. Mama had it straight, right? And she put it in perspective that God will take care of you. God will take care of you. And I, I, I feel some of the backlashes. Like, I'm not 76. and I'm da, da, da. Well, God can provide for you. Just trust him. Trust him. And while you're in the wait, then do what you got to do. If you're waiting on somebody else to complete you, then you're already missing it. You got to recognize in whatever state that you may be in, single, single again, married, that... You're, you, you find your completion in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, let me move on because that's a whole nother message. Um, some folk are waiting, uh, God, waiting uh, for deliverance from adversities or uh, ad adversaries or for that matter. As when David prayed or the psalmist prayed in psalmist, Psalm 27 verses 11 and 14. Some are waiting for the renewal of strength. Um, when exhausted and depleted. Some are waiting for judgment and justice. Uh, others are waiting for the redemption of our broken bodies. The fact of the matter is, as you continue to celebrate birthdays, you get older and you start feeling things that you may not have felt in your younger days. Amen. All the young people, they, they, that just went in one ear and right out the other. Um, and um, for those who have um, increased in age and numbers, you, you realize, like for me, I've noticed that it takes me longer to get ready in the morning, that I got to kind of stretch a little bit and um, have to kind of like, wow. And today was one of those days, and I'm not making this up. When I woke up this morning, I paused for like 10 seconds trying to figure out what day it was. <laughs> like, is this Saturday or is, is this Sunday? I'm not making this up, y'all. That, uh, that actually happened today. And it's a good thing God yeah. clarified that because y'all have been announcing your illustrious pastor. <laughs> And he'd have been sleeping. Uh, uh, some are, and we all are waiting for the blessed hope and the glorious appearance of our great God and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In our text, um, and, and I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to really um, delve into the, uh, the, the, the text as one might, I want to use it more as a backdrop, as an example of folk who uh, were waiting at the door of opportunity. Uh, they were lepers, lepers, lep leprosy. Leprosy was a terrible disease uh, in, in ancient times. Uh, leprosy had to do with some um, disease of the flesh, uh, um, spots. Uh, it, was, it was contagious. Um, there would be spots that appear. Um, it, 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 it would eat away at, at the flesh. Um, it was uh, more than the physical uh, stigma, but it became one of a social um, challenge for those who were lepers. Um, because if you were a leper, you were contagious. Can, uh, you were considered unclean and you had to be isolated from community and uh, in ancient times community was 
big time. It really is today, um, but it was so, so important, that social element, community. And so to be banished uh, to a place of isolation where you could not mingle with other folk and if anybody came around you, you had to warn them, I'm unclean, I'm unclean. This is the stigma that became your story, your story of life. And here they are in famine time, and they're outside the gates here at Samaria. Samaria. And uh, what we see here in these persons, these four leprous men, is desperation. Desperation personified and amplified given their condition. Some of you may not uh, identify with the leprosy, but you can identify with the isolation. You can identify with the stigma. Uh, folk don't like you for whatever reason. Uh, you know what? I think that we should really um, find deliverance in Christ Jesus so that we're not struggling with why people don't like us. I don't know why people don't like me. I don't know why people don't like you. I don't know why we have haters. I think as I look around this room and canvas the area here, you are some of the best people on planet Earth. I don't know why people don't like you. Why people? You don't believe that? I, I got like 20 people to clap. I think you should, should give yourself a hand. Amen. Amen. So you got to come to a place where you un understand the psyche of mankind. If they hate you, it's probably really not about you. It's probably what's in you. And maybe what's in you is so great, you don't even recognize it, but other people see it. And they don't like what you represent because your greatness shines. And rather than, rather than them celebrate you, they decide to waste the energy um, uh, trying to curse you. But the fact of the matter is they can try to curse you all day long, throw in the evening as well. And the fact of the matter is you can't curse what God has blessed. And I've come to a place, thank you, Jesus. I've come to a place and I shall not be moved where your opinion of me really, really doesn't matter. That your opinion of me doesn't affect God's opinion of me. And the fact that you don't want me blessed doesn't stop the blessings from flowing. I'm, I'm feeling encouraged. I'm encouraged. I brought my own amens today, by the way, so you can be stingy if you want to. So think what you want to think. Make up things. Entertain yourself. I've, I've, learned, I've learned this. None of us are perfect. None of us are perfect. Don't get me wrong. I'm not perfect. And when you hear me say that, it doesn't mean I'm practicing sin. Let's be clear, all right? Let's be clear, all right? Um, I got to live right like you're, you're supposed to live right. And in my best attempt to live right, dotting all the I's and crossing all the T's, I may miss it sometime. Amen. I, I, I missed it this morning. I missed it this morning. Um, I missed it this morning um, as I was traveling here, and the speed limit was 55, and I was doing 62. I missed it. I missed it. I missed it. Yeah, I, I, I mm -hmm, mm -hmm. some of y'all was like, that's all 62. Like, I know folk was passing me by 80, I promise you. I said, Lord Jesus, Jesus helped him. Man. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But what we need to do is, like the songwriter said, uh, eliminate the negatives and accentuate the positives. Let's see the greatness inside of one another. The lepers were considered utterly unclean, yet God had set them up, set them up so that they would experience a blessing. They had a decision to make considering their condition. They had to make a decision. Tell your neighbor, you've got some decisions to make. Inaction can lead to missed opportunities. Inaction can lead to missed opportunities. I want to be a doctor. 
Yeah, well, you got to take action and prepare to be a doctor. I want to lose 50 pounds. Not me. I ain't trying to lose nothing, okay? Um, and I ain't trying to gain 50 pounds, but I need to gain, you know, I wouldn't mind having some gain. Um, well, you got to take action. You got to take action. Um, I'm watching, I'm watching um, what I eat. I typically eat healthy, but every now and then um, I have what we call a cheat day. How many cheat, cheat day people are in the house, okay? Cheat day, not cheat days. Some of y'all cheat week. I cheat every day, Pastor. Mm -hmm. See, I was, I was hungry last night, and I didn't want, and by the time, um, and mind you, I'm heading back from the gym, and the spirit of temptation began to seize me. And it was real bad yesterday because I kept hearing in my spirit, KFC, KFC, K KFC, KFC. And I'm like, KFC, KFC, yeah, KFC is about the only place open right now, KFC, KFC. I said, I'm not going to do KFC, so I decided to do something else that I don't do often. I said, you know, because I need to get home, I'm a little tired and I need to do some things, and I'm going to stop by this wall, Walmart. Well, it's a Walmart near my house there. So, and I, and I heard Lauren's voice. I actually did, man. Yeah, that's a nice, that's a nice Walmart. So I said, I'm going to go in there because Lauren said it's a nice Walmart. I'm going to go up in there. And I went in there because uh, I recently learned that they have some good um, um, chicken salad. I recently learned that. And, and, and they do. They, they got the plain kind, like the southern style. That's the one I got. They got a rotisserie uh, chicken one. And then they got the one with the cranberries and pecans choose your own or whatever. So I said, let me go in there and let me get this and I'm going to get some fruit. So I walked out with the potato salad, with some bananas, with some plum cots. Y'all know what plum cots are? Oh, welcome to the world, y'all. Plum cots. It's a, uh, a merge, uh, uh, it's a blend of a uh, apricot and a plum. Check it out. It's the season. Wegmans or Walmart. And then for some reason, I started walking down aisles. You know, there's a lot of opportunities in Walmart, amen, <laughs> at a discount. And so I said, well, let me get some of this, th these, uh, uh, um, uh, what do you call it? energy bars. Let me do this, that, and the other. I walked out with that. And then why did I walk past the bakery section? <laughs> and why was I hearing, patty, patty? <laughs> and why was there a Patty LaBelle Peach cobbler. I admit, I walked out with all of that. <laughs> Patty LaBelle as well. Went home, had that chicken salad, and had some peach cobbler on the side. Praise the Jesus. <laughs> now I'm going to have to go back to the gym to work that, to work that off, because I want gains, but not Not fat. I don't. I, I want you know muscle. So anyhow, your decisions determine your destiny. If you're trying to lose weight but you keep eating and eating the wrong foods, then it's going to affect your health. It's likely not just the weight gain, but the blood pressure and uh, the diabetes. See, some of y'all, y'all ain't listening. You ain't even get that. Help me with this. Help me with this as I, I really, I don't, I, I got just a little bit more to go. Let, help me with this. Look at your neighbor, please, and, and say this. Waiting has its place. Fact of the matter is, waiting does have its place. Yeah. Uh, Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1, 2, 7, and 11 says this. In er, to everything there is a season. A time for every purpose under heaven. A time to be born and a time to be a time to die. Pause. And we trust there's a wait between those points. There's a time to plant and a time to pluck what has been planted. There's a waiting period. A time to keep silent and a time to speak. Pause. How many of you learned that valuable lesson? Some of you are still learning it. Amen, amen. You can't say everything that you think. Sometimes you got to wait. 
Sometimes you just got to grab hold of something and say, mm, 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 mm. Yes, Lord. He has, that is, God has made everything beautiful in its time. Every major figure in the Bible was forced to wait a period of time, many long periods of time before they experienced the fulfillment of God's promises uh, uh, that brought them into their success. For example, Abraham waited 25 years for his wife, Sarah, to give birth to their first child, okay? Uh, Joseph uh, endured 13 years of betrayal, uh, false imprisonment, and abandonment while waiting for his dream to come to pass. Moses spent 40 years tending sheep before God called him to be a deliverer of his people. David waited about 14 years before assuming the throne of Israel anointed as king over Israel, but then he had to go back to tending sheep. We live in what I call a microwave generation. We want it quick and in a hurry. But even Jesus waited, stating, my hour has not yet come. Waiting is not incidental to faith. Waiting is, in fact, an act of faith. It's a major part of faith. Waiting on the Lord is productive. Waiting reminds us that the Lord is God and we are not. Waiting tests our faith. And real faith, when tested, will prove itself in great value. Waiting reveals our true motives. Ladies, sometimes you need to make that man wait. Mm -hmm. And ladies, might I add um, that we remove sometimes and say it this way, you need to make him wait until he put a ring on it. That's old school, but... Ooh, you talking to this new generation. That you, what he mean by that? Put a, have them put a ring on it. Have them put a ring on it and, and get, get your license ceremony performed. And, and because this is 2023, bros, um, you need to hold off as well until there's a commitment and covenant has been made. Because there's some sistering out there that's trying to produce cheerings. So they, they can have baddie, baby daddies. Ooh, thank you. And it was a lady that said, and their money. Yes, yes, that's what I heard. That's what I heard. I thought it, but she said it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You just need to wait till you have the right person. Because getting the wrong, per walking down the aisle with the wrong person or to the wrong person or waiting at the aisle for the wrong person can mess you up. You can do bad all by yourself. Just tell, tell your neighbor, some things are worth the wait. Some things, are, some things are worth the wait. Waiting builds patience in our lives. Waiting builds anticipation. Waiting even brings transformation to our character. Waiting builds intimacy and dependency upon God. The psalmist said in Psalm 27 and 14, wait on the Lord, be of good uh, courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Isaiah 40 and 31 says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like eagles. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm, I'm waiting for the scripture on the screen. There you go, there you go. They shall run and not be weary and they shall walk and not faint. Waiting has its place. But there are times when waiting is wrong. Sounds like a contradiction. No, it's not. Waiting has its place. But there are times when waiting is out of place, when waiting is wrong. Um, Paul having an encounter with God 
fell off his beast. And he's encountering the God of the universe, the one that he thought, in fact, he was fighting for, only to discover that he was really standing against the things of God. He had his encounter with God, fell off the horse, and God gave him a revelation of his true purpose. And so he finds himself in Acts chapter 22 before Ananias and word of the Lord comes to him and says, the God of our fathers has chosen you that you should know his will and see the just one and hear the voice of his mouth. For you will be his witness to all men of what you have seen and heard. And now, why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized. Wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Some things you shouldn't wait for. Uh, choose this day whom you will serve. Some are waiting for a particular time and era of life. You're waiting uh, at, until after I've uh, sold my oats and whatever the saying is. And you're waiting for a particular age and stage. And I want to tell you that the time is now. The time is now. The time is now. So whatever age, whatever stage, where, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, it needs to be to the glory of God. There are times when waiting is not enough. That's, uh, that's the real point of what I want you to hear. To, well, I want all of it's important, but this is where, where I'm trying to drive it home here. Uh, that there are times when waiting is not enough. Uh, I mentioned this on the prayer call the other day, and uh, there was a, an additional part of a, a quote that I heard many years ago, and I have it. I've written it down. I put it in one of my Bibles. It's in my office. It's by Dr. Ernestine Cleveland Reams. She said, too many people think the blessings of God come on a gravy train with bis biscuit wheels. God will give you some things you have to fight for. In other words, there are certain things that you have to fulfill as your part. Stephen Furtick says, miracles are not magic tricks. Faith is not a lottery ticket. Faith is a work order. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hope is the confident expectation of the goodness of God. It's not wishful thinking, but it's confident expectation, believing for, believing to see, believing to experience for oneself the goodness of God. Yeah. Faith, however, without works is dead. Some folk want God just to wave what we would call a magic wand over us and over our situation and everything be well. But there's some things you've got to do. The blessing is in the doing. Consider James chapter 1 verse 25. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed and what he does. Not what he wishes for. Not what he imagines. Not what he heard he should do. But what he is in fact doing. The blessing is is in the doing. I just need you to help me pass that message along. Come on, tell somebody the blessing is in the doing. Blessing is in the doing. The blessing is the doing. It's time for us to get off of the seats of do nothing. He's done his part. You got to do yours. Oh, my God. So here is the word of the Lord to us, agape with our vivid imagination. Yes. And to you, my brothers and sisters here and streaming with us online, he's spoken, he's given you a dream, he's given you vision, he's given you promises, he's given you prophetic words, he's given you resources. Yes. What you waiting for? Wow. He's given you doors of opportunity. Yes. Yes. What you waiting for? I've said this before, but some of you here didn't hear it before, so I'm going to say it again. 
When you consider doors, you've been through some doors today, even the doors getting here. Some of you had to open the door of your car to get into it to drive here, had to open the door of your house to leave it. Doors, doors. Doors, there are many kinds of doors. There, there are doors that have handles on them. You have to turn the handle in order to open and close the door. There are doors that have bars on it, push bars, and you have to push the bars uh, in order to open the door. There are revolving doors, revolving doors, like at Bonefish. You walk in the door, it's a revolving door, and you got to get off at some point or you'll just keep going around in circles. Somebody's in a revolving door right now, and you don't know that you're supposed to get off of it and stop circling the mountain. Uh -huh. uh, there, are, there are doors that you don't have to touch anything. When you walk up to the door, it opens seemingly on its own accord. And I believe in many cases, these are the kinds of doors that are before us today. Uh, they don't require a hand. They don't require a push. They don't require a pull. The challenge with some folk is they're pushing when they should be pulling, pulling when they should be pushing. But the challenge for many of us is simply that we're not doing anything, which is the reason why the doors aren't opening for us. These doors that we call automatic doors, yeah, they're automatic to an extent. Uh, but if you look up, you'll see that there's a motion detector. So when the motion detector detects motion, then it signals the door to open. The reason why some doors aren't opening for some folk is because they're not moving. There's no movement. There's no detection of movement. Faith without works, faith without movement is dead. Oh, help me with this. Look at your neighbor and say, it's time for you to bust a move. Come on. It's time for you to bust a move. It's time for you to stop waiting and start doing. It's time for you to stop waiting and start doing. It's time for you to stop waiting and start doing. Seems like everybody today is talking about blessings and favor. And, and one could say that blessings and favor is trending today. Uh, the subject of blessing and favor is trending today. Name it and claim it. Uh, believe and uh, profess it and confess it and possess it. And all of these wonderful sayings. But the fact of the matter is, is there are some things that will not happen until you start doing something. Psalm 90 and verse 17, the Amplified puts it this way, and let the beauty and delightfulness and favor of the Lord our God be upon us. Confirm and establish the work, the work, the work of our hands. Yes, the work of our hands. Confirm and establish. See, we want God to do what he does with his hands, and rightly so, as only he can do. But God has enlisted us as partners, as co-workers, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, and he has placed something within our hands. He has created you and I in his image, in his likeness, and has given us to have dominion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are things that aren't going to happen until we make them happen. Uh, so you, you want a better marriage. Well, you got you to gotta do your part to make it happen. Sometimes it simply means shutting up. Sometimes it means saying, I'm sorry. I ain't getting much love up in here today, but I'm... I'm I'm helping you, helping, I'm helping you, I'm hel helping you, I'm helping you, I'm helping you. <laughs> Sometimes it means uh, praising the behavior you want. Sometimes it means making a, a big to-do about the little something to appreciate your spouse. Sometimes it's simple as that. Sometimes you, you're waiting for a promotion, but you're not doing anything for promotion. You're lazy, you're mediocre. Sometimes you want friends, but you're mean, you're nasty, you're moody.
We don't know what we're going to get from one day to the next. You have not been diagnosed as schizophrenic, but we wonder. You're troubled, you're traumatized, and instead of getting healed, you want to trouble and traumatize others. And God will heal you, but you got to work with him. We have compartmentalized our lives, and we've given God access to certain rooms, but to certain rooms we say, God, leave it alone. But if you truly want what God is offering, healing and wholeness, peace and prosperity, you got to stop waiting, and you got to start doing Oh, look at your neighbor say, stop waiting and start doing. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. You shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous. And you will have good success. Joshua 1 and 8. Isaiah 1, 19 and 20. If you are willing and obedient. Mm. Oh, I got a hold off here. I'm feeling my, my, my church of God in Christ stirring up on the inside of me. Uh, okay. You shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Well, best thing for me to do is be willing and obedient because then I can eat and enjoy the good of the land. Oh, yeah, that's the, I, Y'all look smart. He says, I give you this day a choice. Blessings and cursing. Choose blessings that you may live. You and your descendants thereafter. Do you not know the decisions you make today not only affect you, but affect those who, who are in you or who have come forth out of you? Let me hurry up, oh Lord. Let me hurry up. Let me hurry up. Let me hurry up. Uh, Ephesians 3 and 20. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, Above all that we ask or think. One translation says, imagine according to the power that works in us. It's in you, but you got to work it. It's there for you, but you got to go for it. Well, in my conclusion... I want to take us back a week when Pastor George Seawright II ministered to you from a passage in 2 Kings chapter 3. And he spoke of Elisha the prophet to the people. Elisha was summoned to uh, uh, bring a word from the Lord because they were in a uh, challenged place. Israel was in a challenged place and, and Elijah was like, you know, if it weren't, <laughs> if I did not regard the presence of Jehoshaphat, the king of Ju Judah, I wouldn't even give you the moment right now. He said, but bring me a musician, bring me a musician, uh, bring me a musician to play, to play under the anointing. And the musician began to play and the word of the Lord came. That was common in ancient times. And, and I believe that that's God's uh, plan and purpose that continues even today, that when the musicians play under the anointing, the word of the Lord can be released. Um, the word of the Lord can come forth. The change happens in the environment. I, I love, sometimes when I'm tired, I get here and I'm just energized as I sit in the atmosphere and I hear anointed music. And so uh, the Bible says that then it happened. We should expect every time we come and the praise and worship of the Lord comes that then it happens. I come with expectation. 
I know not everybody comes with expectations. Some are here because you want to be here. Some are here because you were made to be here. But when you come, you ought to expect something to happen. I expect something to happen every time I enter the presence of the Lord with my brothers and sisters. I expect something to happen. Do you expect something to happen? If you're expecting nothing to happen, guess what? You're going to get what you expect, nothing. But if you expect something to happen, if you expect something good to happen, something good good is going to happen. In fact, I got a great expectation for every one of you right now. Would you just expect something great for your neighbor right now and say, I expect something good's getting ready to happen for you. In fact, I believe it so much, I just want to pause right here and give God some praise. I want you to take about 10 seconds and just praise God for your neighbor and what God's getting ready to do. Just at that moment, hand of the Lord came upon the prophet. And the prophet said, thus says the Lord, make this valley full of ditches or trenches. For thus says the Lord, you shall not see wind, nor shall you see rain. Yet that valley shall be filled with water so that you, your cattle, and your animals may drink. And this is a simple matter in the, to the, in the sight of the Lord. He will also deliver the Moabites into your hand. And the Bible lets us know, just as it was prophesied, these tired folk, they began to dig. And they dug some more. Look at your neighbor and say, dig it. You need to get to digging. God didn't need people to bring water. He could have just spoke water. Like he said, let there be light. And water would have showed up on the scene. See, what God is looking for is your faith. God says, show me your faith and I'll show you my faithfulness. Show me your faith. And I'll show you my faithfulness. He said, I'm going to do this, and it ain't even going to look like anything's happening. There's no wind. There's no cloud. It doesn't even look like, doesn't even smell like rain. He said, but I'll show you. And so they began to dig ditches, trenches, not a ditch, not a trench, but ditches, trenches plural. How much do you want? You need to dig for much. What is your expectation? Dig at the level of your expectation. Some folk dig a little bit because that's all they expect is a little bit. But what you need to do is expand your expectation and dig a lot of bit. Why settle for a little bit when you can have a lot of it? And so they dug and they dug throughout the night. Some of us quit after one ditch, but you got to keep going and going. And you got to be better than the ever ready bat, uh, uh, rabbit. Uh, uh, you, you, got, you got something better because that ever ready battery will wear out at some time. But what you have inside of you is the greatness of our God. You have his ability. You have potential that you have not yet tapped. You have been called to purpose. You've been called to the kingdom for such a time as this. Why are you sitting back doing nothing? Why are you sitting back waiting for God to do what God has already done? God said it's right there before you. you got to do something. And when they dug the ditches, then all of a sudden the Bible says that water came. I mean, water came from everywhere. And they were able to enjoy the blessing of the Lord to refresh themselves and then gain victory over the Moabites. I'm here to tell you, if you just dig, if you just do your part, if you stop waiting and begin to do what God has already showed you to do, then what's next will come and you will be faithful and you will enjoy the goodness of the Lord as you cooperate with him.
Stop waiting for the ideal moment. Stop waiting till everything is right. God put something in your spirit. It's just so big. Well, it's so big because God wants you to know that it's him. Because if it was a little something and small, you could do it yourself and you wouldn't have any need for him. So he's saying, don't wait till you have everything you need to get started. I'm just, I'm just, I, 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 I just got to wait. I got to wait for the right moment. I got to wait for the right, the, the right money. But you need, just may need to start with what you have. There's 5,000 men besides women and children. That's a lot of people. Theologians say there was upwards of 15 and 20,000 people. And don't ever accuse me of being long-winded. Jesus preached so long, them folk was hungry. He preached a while. Paul preached so long that a young man fell asleep, fell down dead, raised him up from the dead, and went right back to preaching. I'm almost done. These folk are hungry. The disciples are saying, Jesus, now you have... They're hungry, and we have nothing to... What do you, what do you have um, among you? What do we have? Jesus, my Lord. What, what do we have? What do we have? What do we have? What? Jesus, all we have among 5,000 men and all the mother, women and children is two fish and five loaves of bread. Jesus says, good. Give it to me. He blessed it. He broke it. He said, put the people in companies of 50. This all took time, y'all. Didn't happen like that. Took time. Okay, you'll get here. And when you're dealing with people, it probably took a lot of time. No, no, 50. I said 50. You number 52. Get over here in this group. Because you get this bunch. This, and, and then they're hungry and they're irritable. Then you get some folk. I want to sit over here like some of you do to ushers. I'm grown. Tell me where to sit. I'm going to sit close up to Jesus. <laughs> Took time. Then he says to the disciples, now is the time. I want you to take these two fish, five loaves of bread, and feed the multitudes. Somehow or another, they had to cooperate with God. The wait was over, and they started moving. And doing what God had called them to do. You know the story. Everyone was fed. Everyone was fed to the full and they had leftovers. It started with two fish and five loaves of bread. God has given you your two fish and your five loaves of bread. It's time for you to bust a move. Join me standing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I, 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 I know what I'm talking about by the word and by experience. Um, we didn't have any of what we have today when we got started, but we had faith in God, and I knew I had to do something. I knew I had to do something. I knew I had to cooperate with him. And that's my story today, that I have to depend upon God. These last few years have been crazy. We've not seen anything like it. Um, and we had to believe and trust God to bring us through. And he continues to lead us and guide us. Um, when you, I, I, didn't, I didn't go um, back to school because I wanted to be called Doc. People were calling me Doc before. So I didn't need to go and subject myself to what I subjected myself to just to be called Doc. That wasn't my reason. Uh, I wanted to become a more effective leader and want to help others to become more effective. And so I had, I had to do it. Even when I thought I couldn't do it, I had to do it. I had to do it. And I'm no better than you. What has he given you to do? 
then you got to do it. Stop. Some of us believe God wants to use us in praying for the sick. Well, pray for the sick. Stop waiting. You don't have to wait to be ordained to pray for the sick. You don't, you, don't, you don't have to wait for somebody to pour oil over you. The oil's already on you. Stop waiting. Start doing. You don't have to wait for licensing to be an evangelist or to the work of the evangelist. Some folk, they are screwed up in the mind. They think, man, I said that. Um, is, that is that okay? That's not offensive. Some folk think that this is where evangelism occurs. The pastor need to give me the mic. Let me. You don't need a mic to go out in the hedges and the highways. Because there are the centers, there's, there's a few of them here. But we're largely believers. The center folk is out in center folk places. I know we got some saints up in center folk places too. I got you. I know. And you're not necessarily trying to witness. You're more like witnessing, but not about the gospel. Just kind of observing, looking. That'll catch you on the park where you watch. I'm talking to this side over here. I'm just looking at y'all, right? Um, you can get out in the malls. You can go out to parks. And you can witness. And, and, and you can do it with creative genius random acts of kindness hey I just want to give this to you and I want to give it to you I'm going to be honest this is from my heart to yours but from the greater heart the Lord Jesus and make certain you present the gospel the good news the good, gospel is good news don't just be pointing at people telling them you're going to hell some folks like you too late. I'm in hell. This is this is hell right now. This is what they're dealing with. No, they need the good news that you don't have to go to hell when heaven can be yours. Help us, Lord. Can we pray? Would you pray with me? Pray with me, and I, I want to lead you in this prayer. Say, dear Father, forgive me for waiting when I should have been doing. Forgive me for waiting for everything to be perfect. Forgive me for not trusting you. This day, I make this promise. I will do what you've called me to do for your glory not mine, but your glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Before we leave here, before we leave here, let me revisit a point. Sometimes waiting is wrong. If you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord, wait no longer. Now is the day of salvation. Now is the time. I want to pray for you if you want to receive Jesus Christ as Lord. For those of you who are in person, for those of you who are streaming online, please, no one move. This is the most sacred moment. Make the choice today. Choose Jesus Christ. Choose life, and you will live. If you'll say, Pastor, I want, I, I want salvation. I want to be born again. I want to be a child of God. Pray with me. Would you pray with me? I'll be delighted to do so. All I need you to do is show me who you are, and I want you to simply raise your hand high enough and long enough for me to see it. I'll acknowledge your hand, and then you can put it down. So if you're here and you say, pray with me, Pastor, just wave your hand. Wave your hand. Where are you? Viewing online, I can't see you, but others can see your name. If you'll just wave, put a wave emoji or just identify yourself. We'll pray with you. Some of you, I see your hand. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I see your hand, dear. God bless you. There, there's another hand. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Would you, church, help me to pray with these individuals? Let's lift our hands before the Lord and say, Dear God, I repent of my sins. 
I come to you in Jesus' name. I believe Jesus is risen from the dead. And with my mouth this morning, I confess Jesus is Lord. Lord Jesus, save me, deliver me, fill me with your spirit. Take my life and use it for your glory. I believe the word of God is true. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Therefore, I am saved. I'm a new believer. <clears throat> I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. Old things are passed away. All things are become new. Thank you, Father, for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Come on, a thunderous <laughs> praise to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Those of you here in person and those of you who are streaming with us, there's a number that's going to appear on the screen. I want you to text prayer. Get your mobile devices out, please, and text prayer to 908-888-9901. They'll keep that there for a moment. I want you to please do that and do it as soon as possible and let us know. In fact, do it right now, please, and let us know that you pray to receive Christ or maybe even to rededicate your life to the Lord. We want to be in place here for you to help you grow in grace and in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. For those of you who are here in person, while others may be leaving uh, in the next uh, minute or so, uh, I'd like you to just pause and come forward at the conclusion of the service. We have ministers uh, and elders who are standing at the altar uh, to receive you. I want you to just tell them, I prayed with pastor. We have something we'd like to give you. If you need a Bible, we have one to gift you because man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of the mouth of God the Father. We want to make certain that you're equipped with his written word. And Others of you who might just need someone to stand with you in prayer um, for a particular situation, healing in your body, um, these are positioned and um, delighted to do so. There is a name that keeps coming to my mind, and it started coming on yesterday. And I thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm just going to go out and, and I'm going to go out on the limb, rather, as one might say, and just say it. And this is how, how I'm perceiving it. Um, your last name may not be Samson. I believe it's a surname that I'm hearing. If it's not Samson, you're connected to the Samson family. And you may have found this out recently by Ancestry.com, for example. Um, well, here's the word of the Lord for you. Like Samson in the Bible, you have a calling. You have been chosen by God. Samson came from the tribe of Dan, which had to do with order and justice. And there's something that God has placed in your heart. It's been a yearning of yours, a desire of yours, and you've not known what to do about it, how to get started. Well, God is speaking to you today. This is your something that you need not to wait for any longer. He's going to make it plain. But you got to be clear on this. As with Samson, you need to live a life that is set apart unto God. Do not allow yourself to be entangled with the things that the enemy may send as temptation to deter you. It will throw you off course. You will be misaligned and you'll not be able to do what God has purposed for you to do even before the foundation of the world. But I trust even in that God is sending this word to minister to you today that you're going to hear it, you're going to grasp it, you're going to receive it and you're going to walk in it. And great shall be your testimony and to the glory of God. Let's say amen and praise the Lord here. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. One final thing to do before we leave, and it's a point of the message that I, I excluded just because I ran out of time, but I feel a need to say it now. When you read the narrative, and many of you um, have read that even last week after hearing the story about uh, in 2 Kings chapter 3. And so uh, after they dug the ditches, uh, they offered something unto the Lord, a grain offering, which really was thanksgiving and praise to God. And it was after they gave him the offering that the suddenly the rains came. What are you waiting for when it's time to give God a praise, when it's time to say thank you? 
when you praise him, when you thank him, when you give him the glory that's due, what you do in fact is cause the release of blessings. And this is how I want to leave here today. I want us to leave but not before giving God a great, the greatest praise that we've given him thus far. So if it's clapping, clapping, if it's waving, waving, if it's shouting, shouting, but come on, let everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Come on, the blessings and the favor of God does rest upon you and surround you as a shield. No good thing will he withhold from you who love him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you for watching. I trust that you were blessed by the message. And if indeed you were, would you do me a favor? Do all of us a favor. And I say thank you in advance. Take a moment right now and subscribe to our channel and share. And if in fact the message has blessed you, would you partner with us by sowing a kind and generous seed? Your partnership with us helps us to do what we do in spreading this gospel, good news of the kingdom, to people everywhere. Thank you in advance and join us again next time.